and uh, it's here to just kind of share and talk and dialogue with you and um, spend some time together. So welcome him and let him uh, just go ahead. Well, uh, good morning. It's, uh, it's really cool to be here with you guys. Um, your teacher has invited me here kind of for a unique opportunity. And, uh, I mean, I, I don't think it's any secret that uh, I probably have some very different beliefs than many of you, as uh, I'm an atheist, and so I don't believe that God exists. I would guess that many of you here at a, a Lutheran school, a religious school, do believe that God exists. Okay, so now let me just let me just uh, maybe put to rest any fears you have. I just want you to know that I'm not a serial killer. Okay? <laughs> I don't eat babies. Or any, you know, some of these kind of crazy ideas that people have about atheists. Um, and I saw this little uh, sign over here. I thought maybe you put that up for me or something. I'm, I'm not a secret Satanist or something like that. Okay? I don't believe in anything supernatural. Uh, I don't believe that, that God exists. And here's what I want to do. I want to just kind of tell you some of my reasoning for that and, um, and then have a, a conversation. I don't want to just kind of get up here and, and, and just you know, talk the whole time. I don't want this to be my lecture, okay? But I want to have a conversation. And so feel free to, to interject. I'll say a few opening things, but then feel free to interject, bring up... Um, you know, Jared, I assume that you're going to object to the things that I say, and that's okay. I actually don't expect, I'm, I'm not here to convert you out of your Christianity. I want to I wanna get you to think, okay? So I want you to think, and, uh, and, and again, feel free to disagree with me. I assume you already do. Um, <laughs> now, many Christians, or, or many religious people, or believers in God, think that it is, uh, it's not possible to demonstrate or prove that God does not exist. They'll say something like this, you know, to say that God does not exist is a, a negative claim. And to prove a negative, you would, you would need to have uh, kind of all the knowledge of the universe, right? If you search down every corner of the universe, to know for sure that God does not exist. Now, I think actually that's mistaken. I don't think we have to have infinite knowledge or, or, or have searched the entire universe before we conclude that God does not exist. And let me, let me uh, explain to you the two ways I think we can demonstrate that there is no God. Okay? The first one is by demonstrating that uh, the God, the idea of God, or the concept of God, is logically incoherent. Okay? It's, it's logically contradictory. And so, for instance, let me give you an example. Um, if I said to you, outside of the doors there, there is a square circle. I'd like for someone to go outside and, and, and go grab that square circle for me. Now, would any of you have to go outside and look around for a square circle to determine that the square circle does not exist outside that door? Would you have to go outside and look? No, because you know, right, these two concepts can, are, are contradictory. Um, having something that's square and circle at the same time in the same way, that's just a logical contradiction. If I said, hey, uh, there's a married bachelor outside, could you go bring him in? <laughs> you wouldn't need to go outside and look for him, right? You would know as soon as I, I uttered the, the, the concept that there is no married bachelor out there. Married bachelors do not exist. And so... We can, so when I say there's a married bachelor, you know that thing doesn't exist because it's contradictory. And so in, in, in the first sense, this is one reason I don't think that God exists, particularly the Christian God. This would deal with the Christian God. I don't think the Christian God exists because I think the Christian God is a God that is contradictory in, uh, in the concept. And so you have, right, I would guess that probably you're a Trinitarian in your beliefs about God, that God is three beings who is also one being. But that is a contradiction. To say that there are three separate beings who are at the same time one being is a contradiction. Three beings are three beings, and one being is one being, but three beings cannot be one being. You see? And so that would be a, a contradiction that, uh, that, that makes me think, well, it's just kind of like a, a married bachelor. If you have three gods who are one god, that just seems contradictory to me. 
And, uh, and so, I, so I don't think that the Christian God exists. Now, let's say you were able to overcome that objection. Let's say you, you were able to somehow overcome that. Um, well, I still think there are problems. Because another way that we determine whether or not things really exist is by looking at, by going and looking. Right? So if I said to you, outside in the parking lot, there is a unicorn. Okay. Now, is it possible, is there anything contradictory in the concept of a unicorn? I mean, there's no contradiction, is there, uh, between a, a horse and a, a horn, right? I mean, that's a possibility in some world. Uh, it's just not an actuality in this world. I mean, we've, we've looked, right? We, as we, we uh, discover things all, all across the world, we have just found no evidence of a unicorn, let alone the unicorn itself. Now, it doesn't mean that it's impossible, like a square circle. It just means, well, look, this thing's possible, but it, it doesn't really exist. There are no unicorns. We don't find, you know, uh, unicorn fossils or, you know, a chip of a unicorn horn or anything like that. And so we would, it, it's, now it's possible that that thing exists, but as we look, there's no evidence for it. And so at this point, it seems pretty reasonable for us to believe that there are no unicorns. Well, in the same way, when we look into the universe, uh, we don't find God. There's no evidence for God. In fact, it seems like as we grow in our scientific knowledge, uh, the need for God as an explanation has disappeared. Right? You had... Uh, you had ancient people who didn't have the kind of knowledge that we have today who would, would use God as an explanation for things they couldn't understand. So, for instance, the natural world, right? The, 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 the Greeks would look out into the natural world. They would see thunder and lightning. Now, they don't have the scientific knowledge to explain what's going on in the natural world with thunder and lightning. So what did they do? Well, they attributed thunder and lightning to the gods. So Zeus is angry, and that is, uh, he's throwing down lightning bolts from Mount Olympus or something like that. But as we have progressed, as humanity has progressed and we've grown in our knowledge, we no longer have need for that explanation. We know that it's not Zeus. We have a, a natural explanation for those kinds of things. And, uh, and so what we want to avoid are what we call arguments from ignorance. That's what the Greeks did. When they didn't know something, they put God there. And uh, this is what we call a God of the gaps argument. You have a gap in knowledge, and so you say, oh, it must be God. Right? We don't know how the universe got here. Oh, it must be God. And, uh, and that's not a good argument. Okay. Now, he, here, let, let me kind of wrap this up, and then we'll, we'll jump into dialogue here. Um, so my, I don't think that God exists. I think it's, I, I think you know, our, our science has uh, has shown us that there's no God. I think uh, the rationality shows that there's no God, and so that is why uh, the believer needs to exercise faith, right? And, and I'm not against people of faith. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, if, if if you want to to uh, you know to put your faith in the Bible or in God or in the moral concepts of your religion, I think that's okay. I think it's okay for you to have faith. Faith is kind of that non-rational, uh, uh, you, you, you know, believing. And it's okay for you. I, I don't think we should outlaw belief in God or anything like that, okay? Uh, but I think that is in the realm of faith. God and, and, and these kinds of things are, are faith-based concepts which is perfectly legitimate for you to believe. I just don't think that we should, we should go around imposing that on someone else because that's, you know, that would be your personal belief. I, I certainly don't believe what you believe, and, and I wouldn't want to impose what I believe on you, right? And uh, so I think it's completely legitimate for you to, to exercise faith. Faith seems to be a very uh, helpful thing for people. And, uh, and so I think, you know, there, there are a lot of benefits to faith. I'm not one of those atheists who thinks, you know, faith is going to ruin the world or anything like that. I think there's a lot of good things that come from faith. And, I, and, I, and that, I'm okay with that. Um, I just think you want to keep those things kind of in that faith realm and not try to bring them out of, out of that faith realm. Okay. So those are just, I mean, that's just kind of a, uh, an introduction. Now, let's, let's have some conversation.